lot of people think of politics almost as this ideology. Why you seek the change in the first place is because it spoke to you personally. The personal for me is really political because you champion all the things you are. When there are communities that are not receiving anything at all, it's hard to be equal with nothing. We need to be equitable in how we distribute not only the wealth and the funding, but how we distribute the compassion. My mom, she has this really interesting quote, which is the finger by itself can't do anything, but the five fingers is what lifts the hand up. But when you create a sense of community and a sense of camaraderie, that's when you really start to create the most change. What are we choosing to invest in? What future are we choosing to put money into? Policing is overfunded. It's very ill thought out in terms of its training. They're not equipped to deal with mental health. Seeing armored officers is probably not doing anything to de-escalate the situation. We are paying the police more than we are paying our healthcare workers and our spiritual workers, which are healing our minds, we're healing our hearts, they're healing our traumas. When you go into a community saying, I want to heal versus I want to enforce, we're not putting a burden on our officers, but we're also creating more avenues of accountability and safety for the actual communities that we're serving. What's wrong with the education system? Well, the people who make the decisions think that they're doing this excellent job of being equitable, making sure all their kids have an equal education. Actually, no, it's from my high school experience. The most challenging thing was to feel like I didn't belong. They almost think like it's okay for them to tell you that, oh, I don't need to teach you because you're gonna be a dropout and have 11 kids like your mom. And I said, first of all, she has nine. How can I separate the politics? When I know I've been denied chances, but I know other people who look like me will be continued to be denied those chances until we change something. Financial equity is, doesn't exist. Education equity doesn't exist. Health equity doesn't exist. Who has the higher rates of, of diabetes and heart disease? It goes back to, to black communities and the indigenous community in our country. Even as a black Muslim woman, I have to always check my privilege because my blackness doesn't automatically negate the fact that there's sexism in my community and I have to fight for that as well. Every group has somebody that needs to champion them. In their stories lies a lot of solutions. The most powerful thing that people can do with their privilege is acknowledge it and use it to advance people who don't have privilege in the first place. And having authentic power is holding the microphone. After making sure everybody had an equitable voice at the table, but when, whose table is it? Who's the table for? How long will I have a seat there? But when you say I built something from the ground up, like I built an arena, I, I don't need a table, I need an arena. Once we get everybody in and saying, this is what I want to change, this is what I want to move, then you can actually say, we've come to a consensus. We've come to a place where nobody feels vulnerable, nobody feels unsafe, and nobody feels oppressed.